We've recently got these two baby white tree frogs from Cheshire Reptile Rescue. So we're going to be taking one of these exoterra enclosures, turning it into a fully bioactive, naturalistic baby white tree frog enclosure, complete with a basking spot, UV lighting, live plants, and this is how we do it. When picking the correct enclosure size, you need to take a couple of things into consideration. One, does the animal need UV lighting? The white tree frog fall on Ferguson Zone 2, that's a UVI between 1.1 and 3 UVI. So we are going to need to add some UV into this enclosure, so we need space on top of the enclosure for that. They also need a basking spot around about 83 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's there to help with their digestion. So we need to make sure we can allow for that inside the enclosure as well. They need quite a high humidity, so adding an enclosure where there's not too much ventilation, but enough ventilation to allow for correct air circulation is vital. And lastly, they need space to be able to move around, but not too much space where they won't be able to find their food. In this instance, we've gone for this little Exoterra Nano, simply for the size of the animal. It is quite a large enclosure for these two white tree frogs. Now eventually, we will be moving them into something like this, for as they get to sort of mid-size range. When they do get a bit older, they'll be getting something along this lines into this 60 tall Exoterra that we have for our morning geckos. That'll be a fun build video, make sure you are subscribed if you want to see that. With this Exoterra Nano, we can allow for UV lighting in the top. We can use something as simple as heat cable for the side for a basking spot. And with the double vented system you get on these Exoterras, you've got great air circulation while still keeping in higher humidity. Now this bit's gonna shock you all. While it's set up, up there already, we're gonna check the parameters of it, check the UV rating, check the temperatures, just to make sure it is good enough for the white tree frog. To do this, we've got a thermometer a solar meter which checks the UV rating and a hygrometer. Temperatures were absolutely perfect. I'm more than happy with that. However, the UV. Now the white tree frogs sit on Ferguson Zone 2. That's a UVI, an ultraviolet index of 1.1 to 3. Most people, when they keep white tree frogs, they go for something along the lines of a 2% UV or a 5% UV bulb. However, what I've got in here is what's typically used for some bearded dragons. It's a 10.0 Exoterra compact UVB ball. Once the UV rays go through the mesh, it does reduce a little bit and then into the enclosure. The UVI that's being read inside this enclosure is absolutely perfect. However, some people actually use these for animals like bearded dragons that are on Ferguson Zone 3. It just goes to show these bulbs are nowhere near good enough for Ferguson Zone 3 animals. Now we need to get this enclosure down off the rack because we need to give it a really good clean. This enclosure was used to incubate some morning gecko eggs that were left in there from a previous morning gecko enclosure. All of the eggs have just hatched Aren't these babies cute? Now we have noticed quite a bit of water in the drainage layer of this system. Quite a bit too much if I'm honest. So we need to make that drainage layer a little bit thicker. To do this we're going to get the plant out of the enclosure. Along with all the saturated substrate that is in this enclosure. You really want to take your time with this bit and try not to damage the, the plant roots that are already in there. We're going to get the barrier out of the enclosure. We remove all of the old hydro balls that are still in that enclosure, along with the water that is in there. There is a possibility it could be stagnant water and we don't want that inside the enclosure. To do that, we used a piece of tubing and we siphoned out the water. Be careful when you're doing that. We're going to add more hydro balls into the bottom of this bioactive hydro ball system. Then we have to clean the entire glass before we put the plant back in there. To do this, we're going to use a razor scraper and some water, just keeping it nice and neutral. We want to get all the remnants off from the morning gecko eggs that were previously in there. Remove the sticky tape from the front ventilation of the enclosure. This was left there so baby morning geckos wouldn't escape. However, there are no baby morning geckos in here now, so we can take that off. Then it's time to start replanting the enclosure. We lay the barrier back into the enclosure on top of the hydro balls. We pack in some substrate around it. We want to add in even more substrate this time, so we need to get some more on top of that. Keep packing it in nice, thick, deep layers, just to allow for the humidity gradient throughout the enclosure throughout the day. At this point, it's now time to start misting the enclosure down quite heavily. One, to help the plant settle into its new environment, and two, to help some water go through the substrate layers and into the drainage layer. It is important to have some water into the drainage layer. That allows for a natural evaporation that these animals would naturally see in the wild. The water comes up through the water table and into the environment throughout the day. 
Now if you want to know what type of substrate we're using, it's our own blend of a tropical mix substrate. It's great for keeping that humidity within the substrate and slowly releasing it throughout the day. It's great for a cleanup crew to be able for them to survive really nicely. And it's just an all round really good tropical mix. If you want to know more on how to make it yourself really cheaply, I have done a video on it and I'll link it in the top corner of the video right now. Now the next part of the video we need to start thinking of the UV lighting. The animals need to have some form of an escape from the UV lighting. Some sort of hideout place somewhere where the humidity can be risen inside but it can be fairly dry inside. To do that we're going to get a piece of cork bark and we're going to stick it on an angle. It gives them a bit of a ramp to get up to the, the glass if they want to. It gives them a hideout underneath if they want to get away from the UV lighting and it also makes it dry under there because we're going to be misting from the top of this enclosure. If we mist from the top underneath that hide it's going to stay fairly dry but it's also going to attract the humidity and trap the humidity under there that comes through the substrate. That's what we're going to do next. Next we want to add in a load of live plants. Now what do the live plants actually do inside the enclosure? One, they're a great humidity source. They can allow the humidity to rise off throughout the day, providing a constant humidity throughout the entire day and night, just like would naturally happen in the wild. Number two, they breathe in all the carbon dioxide that are in the air and they breathe out a load of oxygen, providing an extremely healthy air quality inside the enclosure for the animals that are in here. And number three, it just looks amazing. It's a slice of nature inside your home and you can watch it grow and progress over time. You can also use a really good plant grow light like the Reptile Systems New Dawn LED range. They're an LED light that your plants actually absorb and help them grow really thick, really strong and really durable. All the products that I've shown throughout this video, the solar meter, the lights, everything, they're all going to be linked down in the description below. So finally we're going to add a few little bits of moss throughout the enclosure just to again help with the humidity throughout the day. We're going to add this baby spider plant in there just because I want somewhere to put this spider plant and it's just going to help out throughout the day anyway. Before we add the frogs into this enclosure we'd like to make a big thank you to Cheshire Reptile Rescue. Their Facebook link is in the description down below. They're the ones that supplied these frogs to us. Cheshire Reptile Rescue are a reptile rescue company. They take in ill or unwanted pet reptiles, they rehabilitate them back up to health and then they find forever homes for those specific animals. We here at Northern Exotics, we've taken in a couple of their animals so far. One being these white tree frogs, number two being a wild stowaway lizard. This lizard is a Chinese house gecko, it came in a shipping container from China. Can you imagine the people working in the factory when they opened up that shipping container and out jumped this little lizard? How amazing is that? Either way, we have to keep this lizard in captivity or send it to the authorities and they'll destroy it. So we love our reptiles. It's going to stay here for good. It's currently in its quarantine enclosure right now. We add the water bowl and give the enclosure a good mist down before we add the frogs in. After letting that enclosure get up to temperature, because obviously the water we put in was cold water, so we have to let it raise up to sort of room temperature so it doesn't shock the animals, and then we put them in. You've just seen one get put in. Again, we don't know names for these. I did like an idea that someone commented saying call one tick and one tock because Northern Exotics is now on TikTok. I thought, I thought that was quite ingenious. But yeah, now these are in. Look at them, they're just out, they're so tiny, it's unreal. But look at that one's trying to escape by the door already. I can't close the door on him, I just can't. I've learned that mistake once before with a morning gecko. So get him in, it doesn't hurt him, I'm just being really gentle with him. He'll turn around and there he goes, and now we can get the door shut nicely and put the enclosure back on the rack under the UV lighting and the heat. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider liking, subscribing. You know the normal score by now. We're always bringing out videos like this, so we'd really appreciate your subscription.